Welcome to my part two of my Super Mario 64 ROM hacks tier list. If you haven't seen the first video, I'd recommend you watching that one first. But if you want to see the hacks that came out in kind of the middle stages of ROM hacking, just you can skip to this one. So in the last one, we placed the first 50 ROM hacks I played. And in part two, we're going to do the next 50 I've played. So there was about four ROM hacks that I played after I did my first list that came out within the first timeline. So we're going to place these four first. So the first one is Super Mario 64 Christmas Carnival Special by Skellix. So this was kind of like a precursor to Star Road. The platforming's fine, but it just doesn't really look the best. I'm gonna put it in C mainly just because it came out so early and just respect for the time period. The next hack is Halloweenpy on Spoopy Island. So this is obviously like a Halloween hack. So this hack was made by Bro Dude. It's fun, but one of the stars in particular is just way too difficult compared to the rest of the game. And it just kind of throws the entire game off. Hack was made in 2015 and it definitely kind of has that era in it, but I'm gonna have to put this one in D tier. The next hack is Simple Flips Mansion. So this was made for the first Simple Flips Halloween hacking competition. I ended up taking sixth place. This one I actually enjoyed a lot. I just recently played through this for this Halloween season. Like the platforming just overall is really good. I mean, it doesn't look the best and it is fairly difficult. It's actually pretty fun getting all the stars in this one. So this one I'm gonna throw in B. This next hack was also made for the Halloween hacking competition. So this is Symphony of the Night. Um, this hack was made by Cheese Pin. And this one, I don't know, it's just pretty average. Like, I had to look up footage to remember this game, so it didn't stick out in my head at all. And the hacks in C tier at least have a little bit going for them. So I'm gonna have to throw this one in D also. Um, Franco Sanchez 64. So this is like a neat little hack. It works on console too. It kind of recreates with on Battlefield, and you play as like Isabel. I remember playing it, and it was one of the first console compatible hacks. I, I think B's fair. Like, it's a nice, cute little short hack, yeah. So now I got the Simple Flips Christmas competition, an adventure in Snow Globe by Go and Play TV 1. This was a really good hack, it looked really nice. Good platforming overall. Um, I'm really thinking A or B. I'll throw this one in A, it's just barely an A, but I think it deserves it. Next up is Darius the Janitor by Rover. I didn't really care for this one that much when I first played it. It's cool, it has a story. I think the textures are kind of bland, and I think I'm gonna throw it in C, because it did some cool stuff for the time. Next one is Climbing Mount Starbust by Usernames or Spiders. And this is a hack that I played through, but I decided not to make a video on. Like, I had to like look at videos of it just to remember it, so it obviously didn't stick out much. It is very challenging going up the mountain, and there are some cool mechanics. Like, if you're looking for a challenging Christmas hack, this definitely has a couple things going for it. So I'm gonna have to throw this one in C. I got Snowy Wonderland made by Luigi Man 0640 I mean, this one has a pretty cool slide. It has an area kind of based on, like, New Super Mario Bros. In 2019, though, I think for a hack to be able to make B, it has to do something that, like, impresses me. This hack was pretty standard, so I'm gonna throw this one in C. All right, and then in fifth place, we got Holiday Highlands that was made by Falco Buster. And this one, the platforming is overall pretty cool. You fight with Master Hand at the end, which is like a cool addition. The difficulty is like, I remember being fairly difficult, but still it's not too bad. This one's gotta go and see. All right, next is A Simple Christmas Eve by Cheese Pin. So this one has a very dark atmosphere, has a slide. The stars are replaced with like a cool heart model, and there's like this Yeti creature that you're always talking to. This hack definitely had some cool stuff, but I don't think it's quite cool enough to go in B, so I'll throw this one in C. Alright, next up is Sweater64. And I played through this one, I was like, oh, it looks kind of cool because you have some Tetris blocks around. But the game is just really bland, it doesn't really have a single thing going for it. I played through and I didn't make a video out of it because it just didn't really seem worth it. So this one I'm just going to throw into D. Alright, next we have Super Pizza Time 64 made by Pasta Power, and this one was just really cool. You go around as Spider-Man delivering pizzas. Has that like funny meme soundtrack and everything. Overall, this one, this one's just cool overall. I think this one I'm gonna throw in. It's definitely A or B. I think this one has enough cool stuff. I can throw it in A. All right, the next hack is Super Slide 64 made by SM64 Pi. And this one's really fun. 48 star hack. It's just filled with slides and you have like time trials and everything. I really enjoyed this one. This one I'm gonna throw into S. Like I'm a huge fan of slides. And this hack is just like perfect for that. The next hack we're gonna be looking at is the Super Mario 64 randomizer made by R30. And this randomizer is amazing. It's been constantly getting updates. It's console compatible now and has so many features like 
I gotta throw this one in S. It's a great way to play Mario 64. And I know it's like, arguably it doesn't do that much, but in my opinion, I just love the randomizer. And I highly recommend anybody to try it. All right, now for Simple Flips Retro Hacking Competition. And first we got Marble Zone 3D made by Falco Buster. And this one in particular, it's like, it's pretty good. It's based off Marble Zone from Sonic the Hedgehog. Um, the difficulty, it's a little bit difficult, but to a fair point, I like the way like the textures mash. And overall, I think it's just a pretty solid hack. This one, actually no, I'm going to throw this one in B. Frogger 64 made by Anonymous Moose. So this got second place in the competition. This is like a pretty cool arcade. It's a pretty faithful recreation of Frogger. It has some nice custom objects and stuff. I'm obviously getting a bit harsher as time moves on. But for 2019, I'm going to throw this one in B. Alright, the next hack is Arcade Fighter 64, made by Kahan. And this one was really cool, because you kind of had like various challenges you had to do, almost in like a Mortal Kombat-esque. It was pretty unique, so I'm going to throw this one in... I think it had enough to go in B. Yeah, we'll throw it in B here. Alright, next hack is Super Mario 64 Legend of Peach, made by JCW87. And this one was like Zelda 1 Dungeon. So it's like remade in the Mario 64 engine. I mean, for what it is, it's pretty good. I'm really questioning B or C, so I'm gonna, I'll throw this one in B. Right now for Counter-Strike 1.64 made by SPK. So you have like a Counter-Strike map in Mario 64. And this one, it was done pretty well. It had like a new kind of menu at the start. And just going around Counter-Strike maps in Mario 64 is obviously just cool overall. This one, I'll throw it in B also, like it. Yeah, I think it's good enough for B. Alright, next is Mario's DOS Madness by Luigi Man 640 So you had various DOS games. The one that was most prevalent was definitely the Doom level. But overall, like, Mario and Doom seemed really cool. Three separate levels. Good hack overall. This one I'm gonna throw in B also. Alright, next for Minesweeper 64 by Someone2639, which took 14th place. Minesweeper remade in the Mario 64 engine, which is cool, but... I don't know, It's there's not that much to it, you know? And if you want to play Minesweeper, obviously this isn't the way you're going to play it. it. It's a cool concept. This came out a year or two earlier, I'd probably throw a little bit higher. But at this point, something like this wasn't quite as impressive as it would have been even two years prior. So I'm going to throw this one in C. Next up is Seaside Village made by 64 Modder. This is a short one level hack with seven stars and it looks really good but there's really not that much to it. It is incredibly easy, and if you're looking for a Mario hack that just looks nice, that has difficulty like easier than the original game, this would be an okay choice. But other than that, there's not that much that it does. I'd feel bad throwing a hack that looks this nice in C, so I'll, I'll put it in B. All right, next we're gonna be looking at the hacks from the linear simple flips competition. In second place, we got Jumpman64 made by Cheesepin. So you'd think this is Mega Man theme, but it isn't really. It's just kind of linear levels. This one had a loop-de-loop. -loop. I remember I was so impressed by that loop-de-loop. -loop. And you kind of had like a Indiana Jones boulder chasing you sort of area too. Overall, I think I gotta throw this one in A for the working loop-de-loop. -loop. Like, uh, it's it's barely in A, but this one actually like really stuck out to me. VVVVVV64 made by QG Rocks. For I actually played through the original V6 times. So this game, it didn't have the gravity flipping mechanic, but it had like the textures and the checkpoints down pretty much perfectly. It was a good difficulty. This competition had some pretty good hacks. This one's gonna be either B or A. I, I think the mechanics are good enough to throw this one in A. Like this one just overall, it was just really cool. Next up is Bounce High Skyline. This took seventh place. It was made by Alchemist. I don't remember much from this one. Like I got to look at my previous playthroughs. That just kind of shows that it didn't really stand out for me. For the time, it was an okay looking hack, but like this one just doesn't seem like it had like that much going for it out. So, and since it was so short, it was pretty forgettable. So this one I'm going to throw in C. Mischief Makers 64 made by Zynus22. And Mischief Makers, it's kind of an obscure 64 game, but I actually played it growing up. It had a custom arena model. It's pretty cool overall. Like it didn't impress me that much. Like looking back, I don't remember that much from it compared to like Jumpman 64. Nothing really stuck out for it to me that much, but if you're a fan of Mischief Makers and Mario 64, this is definitely worth playing. But saying that though, I'm going to throw this in B. Alright, next we're going to be looking at the Simple Flip's second Halloween hacking competition. 
The winner of this competition was SPK of their hack, Super Spooky Mario 666. And this hack, it looks pretty good. It is really difficult, but the difficulty is fair. You know, if you're looking for a challenging hack, this is a pretty good hack. It has a really cool mechanic where you press L and you get an extra jump. And then you slowly start dying, and you can only do it once you have to hit a heart. And the mechanic is pretty cool. I think it's worthy of B. Next door, so this is a sequel to Halloween at Booze by Phileg. It's very similar to the first one, but the first one came out two years prior. This one came out two years later, so I'm gonna get a little bit more critical as the time progresses. Because at this point, a lot of people have been hacking for a lot longer. So I'm gonna throw this one in B. It is still pretty solid. The next hack is Super Event Horizon, which took fourth place, uh, made by Ben Wolf and Sheesh FR. And this hack is based off a movie, actually. This one's okay, like it didn't really have anything that was like a wowing quality. The platforming seemed like kind of average, the other two kind of had like gimmicks and stuff, so I feel comfortable putting them in B because it kind of had something extra. This one though, it's kind of your standard hack, I'm gonna have to throw this one in C. Like I'm at the point where to hit B you have to have something impressive in it, you know, if you just have like your kind of standard hack it, it's gonna be hard to make it to B. In fifth place, we got Mario's Candy Quest made by Yoshi Milkman. And this one, like, it's kind of like a cute aesthetic. It's definitely Halloween-like. This is kind of your standard one level, seven star hack. And it's pretty average overall. Like, I think there's definitely better Halloween hacks to play. So I'm gonna throw this one in C. We got the Death of Mario. So this one's made by Alchemist. And I don't, it, it's good. It doesn't have that much things that really impress ya. It, there's some cool blocks. It has an okay story. Yeah, I just think like this time in the timeline, I gotta throw this one in C. Um, Smash Ma Halloween. This hack was made by Hamius8000 and... And this one too, it's just kind of your standard hack with nothing really special with it. I'm gonna throw this one in C also. Super Melee Adventure 64 made by Post Power. And this hack is incredibly cool. You have to play as various characters from Super Smash Bros. Melee that all have their own custom moveset. You have to play through Melee's Adventure Mode, but unlike Mario 64, this one's just super cool overall and definitely one that I would recommend playing. I think I'll throw this one in S. It's just a great hack overall. I, I think it's a little bit a level above the, uh, the A ones. All right, Dory's Treasure Hunt, made by Jesus Yoshi 54 So this one is console compatible, and I played through it, but never made a video on it because it, it wasn't that much stuff that was like really interesting. It had like kind of a cool text engine and everything. It was very, very like kind of dialogue driven, which I'm not really a fan of games like that. So if you are into dialogue games, it's a good game that runs on console. But saying that though, I'm gonna have to put it in C. All right, Decor Galore Slide from Alex from Goldplay TV. And this is a really cool slide hack. It's pretty difficult. Overall, it's just a cool slide for like the holidays. I mean, slides are always fun. I'm a sucker for slides, but this one, I think I'm gonna have to throw this one in. Yeah, I'll throw this one in B. Next up is Castle Grounds Revamp made by 64 Modder. It's a cool little hack with, yeah, the castle grounds just looking completely different with new textures and stuff. Interesting tech demo, but like it's not really even a hack, it's like, it's incredibly easy, there's one star. So I'm gonna throw this one, I think this one can go in, like it does look incredibly good. I'll put it in B. Alright, Super Mario Sunshine by Kaza. So it's only has 20 stars, but they did recreate Sunshine pretty good. Like, if this hack got completed, it would be really cool, but just having the beginning is still really good. If you're a fan of Sunshine and 64, it's 100% worth playing. I think this one I gotta throw an S. Alright, next is Mario Party 64. And out of all the hacks, I've been on record saying this is my favorite hack of all time, and I think I'm gonna say that right now, it's my favorite hack of all time. It combines Mario Party 1 with Mario 64. And it just recreates the boards and everything so well. I actually just replayed this game for the second time on my channel pretty recently. Mr. Comet just did a fantastic job with this one. And if you're a fan of the original Mario Party and Super Mario 64, this is like a must, must play hack. It's so impressive seeing these that were originally only 2D textures remade to be like a 3D environment. I gotta throw this one in S. All right, next we have Detective Luigi by Rovert. So this one was console compatible. It has like a mini map and everything. And it has some cool, cool custom mechanics in it. This one was made for Simple Flip's Mystery Hack competition and ended up taking 5th place. The boss fight's incredible. 
It's one of like the first decomp hacks. I, I, I just remember playing this on console and just being so impressed at the time because there wasn't really much out like this. So this one, I think, I think I, I'm gonna throw it an A. I thought this one was really impressive. And just for the time, for to have a console hack this good, I think it definitely deserves A. All right, the next hack is kind of a meme hack here. We have American Dad's Super Effect made by Blake Oramo. So this is just a very, very short game, pretty much made for a meme. It's console compatible. Like it is funny. And like the fact that they made it work on console, it's a stupid joke, but saying that I put Trump 64 in C. This joke might be a little bit stupider though. At least Trump 64 had some platforming. I think I can throw it in C. Like the fact that it's console compatible, I think puts it in C. If it wasn't, I'd probably be in D, but I think just that we'll throw it in C here. All right, next up is Super Mario Odyssey 64 made by Kaza and Bioback. And this is, yeah, Odyssey recreated in Super Mario 64. It's not the complete game, it's only a couple specific levels, but... The mechanics are really cool, it's really well done. I feel like I'm putting too many Kaza hacks in S tier, but... What can I say? They're pretty good. Let's throw this one, yeah, just right in S. It's so good. All right, Breaking the Barrier by Mario Nova 64. It's kind of like a beta-esque hack. It's it's cool, like it's nowhere near as cool as something like B3313. There are a lot of other beta hacks that came out after this. Like there's just better hacks out there that do the same thing. So I'm gonna have to throw this one in D. It doesn't really serve a purpose anymore. Although like at the time it wasn't like that bad. Star Revenge Zero Galaxy of Origin. This hack is incredibly impressive. It's the only Star Revenge hack I've played through all the way. But the courses are really well done, the difficulty's perfect, like, Brodute did a fantastic job on this one, it's really highly rated. So this one, I'll throw it in S here. Alright, next up for the Zelda hacking competition, and in third place is Hold a Hyrule by Cheesebin, Herotech, and Technomancer. And Hold a Hyrule is really cool because you can actually equip items to your D-pad, it contains a mask and everything, kind of like a Majora's Mask that you can wear. And overall, it just contains some really cool custom mechanics. This one is just really impressive, I gotta throw this one in A. Alright, so the next hack is A Terrible Fate, made by Isaac22. So this hack is based on Majora's Mask, and he plays the Happy Mask Salesman, the Happy Mask Salesman's mod is just amazing and I really like this one because I'm a huge Majora's Mask fan. They just did an incredible job with this one. Difficulty is like perfect, just, just really cool overall. This one took fourth place. I think this one, I, I'll throw this one in A also, like I'm a sucker for Majora's Mask. Right, the next one took fifth place and it's The Legend of Mario Star Sealed Palace made by Sausage Sage and Wise Guy. So this one is console compatible also. It has a lot of stuff from Paper Mario too, so it's gonna like Paper Mario and The Legend of Zelda. I was just really impressed by this one also. I mean, this one I think I gotta throw in A also. The Soul of Legends made by Spurious Fight. So this took seventh place. And this ROM hack, it has a really cool new Link model. The world looks almost like clay. Like it has a really kind of unique look to it and it looks really good. They have these cool custom Deku Goombas. Just the platforming and everything is Pretty good overall in this one. So I'm gonna throw this one in B, but this is like a really strong B. All right, next is The Hidden Temple by Alchemist. And this one, it's cool because it uh, is kind of based off the Stone Tower Temple, where you have to like flip the temple and everything. Compared to the other Zelda ones, it just didn't really compare in my mind. Like there wasn't that much custom stuff in it. It seems like they just kind of flipped the models on Blender. Like, if you like the Stone Tower Temple and you want to experience like that in Mario 64, I think it's still worth it to play it. But saying that, though, I'm going to throw this one in C. All right, next up is Terminal Invasion by Rianu. So for this one, you start off in the Clock Tower, and, like, Mario's replaced by this, I don't know, kind of cool-looking Link guy. Uh, I mean, this one probably should go in C. I'm just such a sucker for Majora's Mask. So having like the snowhead area in Mario 64, I just find so cool. So this one is, it's a bit of a biased placement, but I got to put it in B. Monroe Park made by someone 2639. So this ended up taking 12th place. And I really think this one should have probably placed higher. I think it got kind of penalized because it's not that Zelda-esque. You have to go around with a bunch of different perspectives. It's one of the most unique hacks I've ever seen. 
So for this one, just because of the force perspective and how unique it is, I gotta throw this one in A. Alright, so this is The Legend of Mario made by Lawnmower Man 725 and this took 15th place. So this is based off of Zelda 1, and they have the textures in the environment pretty well. This mod is a little jank, and the camera definitely isn't the best, but seeing that, though, I think just all the Zelda 1 textures, they actually look really good. I think overall, this just hits B. All right, so that was another 50 ROM hacks ranked, so now this list has 100 ROM hacks on it. Seeing that, though, these videos take me forever to edit, so if you guys want to see a part 3, where I go over the next 50 hacks, and then that should include games like B3313 and kind of like the modern era. Let me know in the comments down below. I'll tell you what, if this video gets a thousand likes, I'll make a part three. Anyways, thanks for checking out this video. Obviously, you shout out to all the creators I've talked about in this video, and yeah, I hope that you guys all have a great day.